This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning everyone. Baruch and welcome everyone to Kalal Agar de Perka, the Q Garden Hills branch. And uh, the learning should be as close for Shalem and for my grandfather, Shimon Yeshua ben Sara, Besar Shachal Yisrael. Okay, so this week we bar Hashem begin a new Sefer. We're coming off the heels of Chazak, Chazak, Venis Chazak. So we have Chizuk to begin the new Sefer of the fourth Sefer of the Torah. And this Sefer, which we refer to as Bamidbar in Shas, is often referred to as Chumash HaPakudim. For example, in Masechta Yuma, Daf Samaches Samabes, it says, Ube'asar Shabachumash HaPakudim Kari Alpeh. This is referring to the Mafter on Yom Kippur. So um, instead of taking out another Sefer Torah, they would read it by heart. So this indicates that um, this Sefer is referred to as Chumash HaPakudim, the Book of Counting. Likewise, in the Gemara and Saita, Rabbi Hanina ben Gamliel Oimer, Loi Kedarach Shechalukim Mechumash HaPakudim Chalukim Ma'avnei Eifayit. Again, we find in Shas that the Sefer Bamidbar is referred to as Chumash HaPakudim. So what we have to try to understand is that, you know, a name is supposed to capture the essence of what something is all about. Is the counting of the Jewish people, which actually takes place twice in Sefer Bamidbar, once in Parshas Bamidbar and one in Parshas uh, Pinchas, is this really the main, um, does, is this really the, the most important and dominant theme of Bamidbar that we should refer to the entire Sefer as counting because this is um, the predominant and main subject of the Sefer. So in... Um, it begins, Zah Sefer Nikra Bafi Hamishna Yuma Paragzayin. This is this what we're, what we're going to learn today comes from the Nitziv's Psicha for for uh, Sefer Bamidbar. And he, the Nitziv says, Zah Sefer Nikra Bafi Hamishna Yuma Paragzayin. The Oid, Rabbi Hanim Ben Gamliel, Soita Daf Lamed Vav, Chumash Apikudim. This Sefer is referred to in the Mishnah as well as by Rabbi Hanina ben Gamliel and Soita, the Book of Counting. V'nirsh, and also V'chein Kasa Bahag, <coughs> the Bahag likewise writes this. V'nirsham bedas Rabbi Seinu inyin shnei hapakudim shabazah Sefer. It has been imprinted in the minds of our Rabbis, the subject of the two countings of this Sefer. Yoyser mishari dvarm shemichadim zah Sefer. More important than <clears throat> one of some of the other subjects of the Sefer. In other words, it's almost as if this is the dominant theme of the Sefer. Kumai Hamaraglim, Uber Bilam, Vaid Harbe. There are many episodes and narratives in Bamidbar that we could have named the whole Sefer after. One might not have thought that counting was the most important subject. Mishum de Iker has and so that's the question of the Natsiv. Why refer to the entirety of the Sefer as a book? that is uh, predominantly about counting. And the Nitzv says as follows, Mishum de Iker zeh ha-sefer hu ha-machalif u meshane halichos am Hashem b'chaye ha-olam me'oz shihigiu la-eretz Yisrael min ha-derech shahoch ba-midbar. The main subject of Sefer ba-midbar is the transition of the nation of God in, their, in, in life from being in the desert to Israel. In other words, there, there were two levels of existence of the Jewish people. There's the way they were conducted, how God conducted with them in the desert, which was completely miraculous. And there's the way that God dealt with them in Israel, which was Bedar HaTeva. In the desert, they had Anani HaKavod, they had Mun. Their wars were fought for them. Their food was provided miraculously. In Israel, they had to fend for themselves. Sheba Midbar Hoyumisnagim Bemidas Tiferes. In the desert, they were uh, conducted with the attribute of of splendor, which means Shahalachli Min Moshe Shulagamri Lamala Me'alicha Sateva. They went with Moshe on their right side, which is completely above nature. But with Eretz Yisrael Hochu Bedar Chateva. But in Israel they went with nature. Besisrei hashgachas malchus shamayim baruchu. In the secrets of the divine providence of God. 
So in other words, in the desert, God conducted himself with the Jewish people. In Eretz Yisrael, they fought their own wars, they provided, they tilled the soil, they, they worked the land. By the way, this all comes from the Netziv, from Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, the Rashiva of Elazhen. The Netziv was a very unique personality, in that, as we know, there are many different drachim in the Oilam uh, HaYeshivais. In some Yeshivais, you know, they, um, they only learn sugyas. So they'll learn Yavamis, and they'll learn Saras Tzara, Seidah Chaloy Saseh, you know. They'll, they'll focus on the main pockets of Lamdas. Other Yeshivas, maybe in the mirror, they, they learn straight, but they'll focus more on sugyas. Um, still, not every yeshiva goes through the whole Masechta, and other yeshivas, they, they try to learn the whole Masechta. And Vilajan was unique in that they, their approach was to learn Kala Terakula, and then Nitziv really expanded this approach to include, because uh, Nitziv wrote a parish on Sifri, Sifra, Shiltis, and then Nitziv even gave Shiurim in Chumash to his Talmidim. How many Rosh Yeshivas give Shiurim in Chumash? And actually, the Nitziv's commentary on the Chumash comes from the Shiurim that he gave. Now, at what point in time did God transition the Jewish people from dealing with them supernaturally to allowing them to operate B'dara HaTeva, says the Netziv, V'zeh ha-shinoi hischil oidam ba-midbar. This uh, change began while they were still in the desert, B'shnas ha-arboim, in the 40th year, like it's explained in Parshas Chukas. So, al pizeh ha-shinoi, based on this change in the 40th year, in other words, in year 40, then that is when the natural process started to begin. So, based on this change, the wars the Jewish people fought with the Kananim and with Sichain were in, in a natural way. Another differentiation between the first 39 years and, and year 40 is beginning in year 40. In the beginning, in the beginning of their sojourn in the desert, Moshe always had the staff with him. The staff had inscribed on it the name of God, and through it, Moshe Rabbeinu was able to conduct, to conduct affairs. But in year 40, Moshe did not have the staff with him at all times. And therefore, again, this is indicative of this transformation and transition that go heading into Eretz Yisrael already in year 40, the natural process began. Now, this differentiation that is found in Sefer Bamidbar, we now see and is, it becomes apparent to us in reading the words of the Medrash. So if you look at number 4 in the Medrash, Amar Rab Simon, Chamesh Pa'amim Ksiv Kan Oira Kneged Chamisha Chamshe Taira. In the beginning of Bereshis, it says R five times, corresponding to the five books of Moses. God said, let there be light. Can I get safer Bereshis? That God was busy with and He created the world. So Bereshis is the book of life. Light. Can I get safer? Sefer Shemais is when the Jewish people left Egypt and we left darkness to light. So therefore it says, Vayihar. Vayara Salaikim Es Ha'or Ki God saw the light was good. That's Keneged Vayikra, which is full of many, many halachas and therefore it's a book of light. But then it says, Vayavdel Eloikim, God separated. Bein Ha'or Uvein Ha'choshech. That's connect, that corresponds to Bamidbar, which separates between those who left Egypt and then those who went into Israel. So amazingly, we see in this Medrash that the Medrash refers to Bamidbar as the separation between light and darkness. Light refers to the generation of the desert. Darkness refers to those who entered Israel. One would not have expected the words darkness to be in reference to those who entered Israel. But nevertheless, this is how the Medrash describes it. And as we're going to see in the Nitziv, that's because the, the generation in the desert, their affairs were conducted, they saw God openly, and therefore they were analogous to light, not so those who entered the desert, entered Israel, 
where they had to fight their own wars and, and till the soil, so they are called darkness. And then, Vayikra Lekim or Yoim, that's Keneged Mishnah Torah, which is also Malay Halacha. So back in the Nitziv, that this differentiation, we're in the first paragraph, about six lines from the end, Ve'alzeh HaShanoi HaMatsuyin B'zeh HaSefer, Amru Chazal, based on this differentiation, Chazal say, Vayavdel Eloi Kim Bein Ha'aru Vein HaChoyshech, this is Bamidbar, which is Mavdel between those who left Egypt and those who came into Israel. Deba Halichas Yoytze Mitzrayim, because those who left Egypt, Hoya Or HaShkochas HaShem, Moifia Le'in Koyol, the light of God's divine providence manifested Openly, that was an honor to God and the purpose of creation. As opposed to those who entered Israel, the providence was covered over. Only someone who looked with a very careful eye was able to see that it was God leading them, like someone walking in the night. Or only upon occasion the hashgacha became apparent, like a flash of lightning. So, the, 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 the theme of Bamidbar is the transition from an existence of light, where God's providence is openly manifest, to an existence of darkness, where God is now hiding His open providence, and He's more under the cover. But this is apparent, and the contrast between the first three books and the fifth book is most apparent in the difference between the two countings. As we're going to see, there are a number of discrepancies <coughs> between the two countings in Bamidbar and, and um, Pinchas that highlight the difference in the Hashkacha that Hashem was showing Klal Yisrael. <laughs> this difference was recognized in the two countings that in terms of physical objective, the two countings were trying to accomplish the same. However, but it changed in its purpose and in its form based on the difference in the realities of the Jewish people. The first time in Bamidor that God counted the Jewish people it was based on the order of the Degolim, of the four Ruchais. Basically, God counted them based on the Degolim, which of course represented the chariot of the Shechina. And Ephraim came before Menashe. Even though Menashe is older, but Ephraim is of greater spiritual stature. And therefore, the first counting, which was reflective of their higher level of reality of God being manifest openly, Ephraim comes before Menashe. Not so in the counting of Pinchas in the 40th year. There Menashe comes before Ephraim. Another difference. In the counting in this week's parsha, the head of each tribe had to come from that tribe. Not... Not so the counting in Pinchas. The head of the tribe could come from a different tribe. That's because in Pinchas it was more of a physical count, only to give them physical allotment in the land. So the head of the tribe did not have to come from the tribe. In this week's parasha it was more of a spiritual accounting. To the point where by contrasting these two countings, we see what the whole purpose of Sefer Bamidbar is, namely... It is a transition of the Jewish people from open, manifest hashgacha to um, hashgacha b'derech hateva. Now, says in its siv, mamish adavar oyoyim v'noira. This gives us new insight in number 11 on your sheets into that which the Gemara says we know that in Sefer Bamidbar, there's actually an opinion that there are three books within Bamidbar, hence seven books in the Chumash, that Vayhibin Sayah Ha'arain, the Gemara says, Vayhibin Sayah Ha'arain. Okay, I have to call back. <clears throat> okay, so we're just continuing. The Natsiv says, based on this premise, that the whole function of Sefer Bamidbar is to um, describe the transition from what he calls Ar to Choyshech, to open manifest. Um, revelation of providence to Bedar Chateva. This explains the Gemara in Shabbos, Kuftes Vav Amabez, going on to Kuftes Zayin Amad Aleph, where the Gemara says, Vayihibin Sayah Ha'oroin, Vayoymer Moshe, 
this parsha, Hashem made simanim upside down nuns before and after to say it's out of place. But Rebbe says no, it's in the right place. That's not why they're nu- they're nuns. The reason why they're nuns is because it's sefer bifnei atzmai. And this really begs the question: How is how are two psukim, which are eighty five letters? A safer by itself. What makes it a safer by itself? Doesn't a safer have to be more substantial? Says the Natsiv, this this safer is actually the turning point between the beginning of Bamidbar, where we're still under the obvious and manifest providence of Hashem, and the end of Bamidbar where things changed and we were operating Bidar Khateva. Says the Natsiv, Hanira da Pisa Kavana Amru Khazal, that Vahibin Sar is a safer by itself to teach. Do you know when this transition began? Do you know when we turned from, uh, from, from light to darkness? When we complained by the Messianim? Because they... Here's the problem. God was dealing with us, Bemidas Teferas, which is open, manifest, divine providence. So when God is right near us and we sin... So we, we are culpable for immediate punishment. Because Hashem was, so to speak, at that point, like our shadow on our right side. And this was very hard for us to live up to, to be soivel to the point where we were no longer able to rely and to operate on such a high level. And we wanted to, and we needed to operate on a level more b'der And that's why at the end of Bamidbar, we sent out spies re- recognizing our new reality. Until ultimately we lost any connection with the open revelation of the Midas Teferis, and now we're operating the way we operate today. So, therefore, this little parish of Ahibin Soya, it might be small in Kamos, but it is actually great in Echos because that is the ch- turning point that divides these two realities of the Jewish people. And therefore, each part of Sefer Ba Midbar is a Sefer by itself. Because the definition of a sefer is a subject, a self-enclosed subject. So we could say the beginning of Bamidbar is the subject of open revelation, the end of Bamidbar is Derech HaTeva, and the subject of Ahib and Saya is the turning point. Now based on this thesis, based on this hakdama, I want to examine a number of comments that the Nitziv makes in, in sefer Bamidbar in general, which fit into this theme and will give us added insight into the role of Sefer Bamidbar in the Torah. So let's go to um, number 5, Parshas Chukas. The Pasuk says, Kach es hamata, Take the stick. What do you mean take it? Doesn't Moshe hold it at all times? Isn't it always with him? Says the Netziv in number 6, Hamata hayadua shel Moshe, the well-known st- staff of Moshe. Umizesh amar likach, from the fact that God says, Take it, mevur shelo hayoid b'yad Moshe b'tmidus. That implies Moshe did not always hold it. Ah, he says it does say in Shemais also, take the stick. It says in Atsiv, there the, the interpretation is, is ready, readily at hand. Because there the Gemara in Sanhedrin says that Moshe used our own stick. So sure he had to take it. But here it's Moshe's stick. Why is he taking it? The answer is because this is safer about Midbar. And we are no longer operating with open miracles. The function of the Mata was to make open miracles. Right? Who remembers in the Haggadah? Ha'oisois ze hamate. The mate was defined by miracles because that's what it constantly uh, accomplished. And it was already explained that in the 40th year, the kimat, the miraculous reality, began to stop. Therefore, at this juncture, when Moshe had to perform an ad hoc miracle, so Hashem said, look, on this occasion, take the staff. But it wasn't something that Moshe kept with him at all times. Okay. Another makayim where the Netziv speaks about this is in the Hamek Davar, in Bamidbar, Perak Beis, Pasuk Chaf. This is by the first counting. It says, V'olav Mate Menashe. Okay, let me see if I could get a chumash here. Um, V'olav Mate Menashe. I'm just getting a chumash. One second. 
the Nitziv feels the Nitziv feels that this is a very unusual expression. Again, Parag Beis, Pasuk Chaf. Perek Beis, Pasuk Chaf. You see, everywhere else, Dege Machene Ruvein, Umate God. Vihachoinim Alav Mate Shimon, Dege Machene Ephraim, Vi Alav Mate Menashe, Umate Binyamim. What does it mean, V'ol of Matei Ephraim? It doesn't say that by Yehuda, it says, Machne Yehuda. It says, V'hachoinim olav Matei Yisachar. So what does it mean, V'ol of? Meshun HaLashen Kan, and there's a, a nafkamina. Earlier it says, Choinim olav. Choinim olav is a katan relying on a gadol. And his encampment in fulfilling his needs, is dependent on a greater party. But here it doesn't say, V'hachoinim alav ma'ate menashe. It says, V'olav ma'ate menashe. V'olav implies the das of the gados on the katan. Menashe was the leader. What does this mean? Because even though, like we said in the Hakdama, Ephraim is mentioned first because he was spiritually greater because in the Midbar, the Hanhag of HaKadosh Baruch Hu was miraculous, and this was the great power of Ephraim. But nevertheless, in terms of on conducting everyday affairs, Halicha Oilam, Menashe was the Gadol. That is why in Parshas Pinchas, Menashe is before Ephraim. Because when they entered the land, where they were being counted to enter the land, and they needed more of a, a natural um, procedure, Menashe is before Ephraim. So here it says, the um, the Allah means that at the end of the day, practically, Menashe was still greater. So again, you see that the, the Nitziv is stringing this theme throughout the Sefer, where there are a number of discrepancies and nuances that are only explained based on this approach. Let's look at number 8 and 9. In Bamidbar, it says, Su es roish kaladas me so lemishbachoisam. And in Pinchas it says, In Bamidbar, is juxtaposed to Mishpachoisam. And in Pinchas it is separated. Says in its if, Samoch le Rosh Kaladas Bene Israel, Shahaya had Sivosh Laya Rosh Mishavit Echad al Bene Shavit Acher. Juxtaposed to the words Roish Kaladas Mene Yisrael, the leader, the Roish, needs to be Lemish Bechaisam Lebeisavaisam. But in Pinchas, the Roish is separated from Lebeisavaisam. Vahainu Dechsev Lemish Bechaisam Lebeisavaisam Lefnei Miben Esrim Shana. Therefore, it says Lemish Bechaisam Lebeisavaisam before Miben Esrim Shana. Because there it's going on the age of those who went out to war. And this Pasuk is talking about the leaders. So basically, in Bamidbar, the leader of every tribe had to come from the tribe. It was Roish Ad Kadas Ne Yisrael, Levei Savoisa. Masha'im came Minyan, the Parshas Pinchas, as opposed to the number and the count in Parshas Pinchas, where it says, Suas Roish Kadas Ne Yisrael, Mi Ben Esim Shana Vamala, Levei Savoisa. There it juxtaposes Be Savoisa to 20. And not to Rosh Bnei Yisrael. That's because the counting in Pinchas was merely to distribute the land. And the only thing the leader had to be was 20 years old, but he did not have to come from the Shevet. Like Yair ben Menashe was from Shevet Yehuda, was the head of Shevet Menashe. And he even inherited with them. And there were other examples. So in the Midbar, where they were traveling, Lekavad Ashchina, it was Roish Kadas Me Yisrael Levei Savoisam. But in Pinchas, it was Roish Mi Ben Esrim Shan Vamala. But it did not have to be the Roish Levei Savoisam. Marv Rabbi said two more points that the Nitziv makes in explaining the, um, 
using this principle to explain episodes and incidents in Sefer Bamidbar. One very important one is the Shlach, Parsha Shlach. Shlach Lecha Anoshim, we're all familiar with what Rashi teaches us. Shlach Lecha Anoshim, Rashi explains, send according to your das, but I am not commanding you. Says in its siv, Shlach Lecha, Enoi Bimashma Elak Mai Kach Lecha, Lech Lecha, Shu Mitzvah Kemashmai. Really, Lecha just means it's a command. But Rashi is sort of compelled to explain that Hashem was saying, do it for yourself. Like it's, like it's explained in Sefer Devarim. That in the beginning, only Klal Yisrael asked for this. In other words, Really, the Nitziv says, Shlach Lecha is the command by God. And it doesn't really mean do it, but I don't want you to. It means God is commanding them to. But you do have to say that it came from Klal Yisrael because in Sefer Devarim it was Klal Yisrael's idea. But still, you can't distort the Pasuk. It's still God commanding them to send Meraglam. In other words, the, the Nitziv feels that Shlach Lecha means God says, do it, I want you to do it. And in Mikroyotim Dei Pshutai. And another question is, why now are, are the Jewish people sending Meraglim when they got to Paran? Why didn't they send Meraglim immediately at Choyrev? Says in Nitziv, here's the reason. Lefi halichoy sa'olam ha'teva haya shiluch nocha z'oreis eichel ve'ezer tza'alich bo'y sha'aretz. Sending Miraglim was needed on a natural basis, on a natural plane. To see what kind of land is it? How do we conquer it? Like Durban writes. Like Kali Yisrael said, let's send men and spy out the land and they'll respond to us which road we should take and which cities we should come to first. So they weren't incredulous. They believed it was a good land. They just wanted to send Miraglim to be able to know how Bidara Chateva to conquer the land. But if they if they're Roy to enter land or not, they had no doubt about. They just wanted to know how to conquer it. Second column, fourth line. If they're gonna conquer Israel in a natural way, it is for sure needed to send out Miraglam. Avalam Hulamala Midara Chateva. But if they were operating on a supernatural plane, Kasher Holchwat Hinabah Midbar, as they had been been conducted in the desert until now, in Makam Lashlichas Khalsh, in Dabar Nachitz with Nate Faris Usai. In other words, if God is dealing with them on the level of Bereshis Shemais Vayikra, open manifestation of divine providence, which the Nitziv calls Teferis, there's no need to send Miraglim. It doesn't matter which city is easier or less fortified or what the strategy in the warfare would be. However, if they were operating in a natural phase, which is Sefer Devarim and the end of Bamidbar, they did need to send out Miraglim. So now, says the Nesav, When they stood at Harsinoi, in the beginning of their sojourns, as they stood at Sinai, their intention was to enter Israel immediately, and they didn't need Miraglim. But when they took three travels from Sinai, they saw, they realized, there was no way they would be able to keep up behaving in a way that they would deserve God's Rachamim, even though He's so close with them. Because God's Giloy Shechina amongst them caused them great suffering because they, they felt they couldn't love, live up to it and, they, and whenever they made a mistake they were liable immediately and the Malachi Mavis came and they could not stand up to that. They couldn't be so careful. They, couldn't, they didn't feel they were eligible to stand in the courtyard of the king. And therefore, Bacharu Lamoid Bechutz Vashchinatiya Bekirba Mimidas Malchutz they prefer to live with God where God was a bit more distant. 
In other words, they could not live up to what Tiferes demanded of them. They felt that they needed to exist where God's divine presence was not so intimate with them so that if they would slip up, they would not be held accountable to such a great extent. This Mita is called Malchus. Like we explain in Sefer Devarim in the Pasuk, Panim Bifanim Dibar Hashem Literally, face to face, God speaks with you. But that also implies that in the way that a man acts with God, in that vein, HaKadosh Baruch Hu reciprocates to him. Therefore, God said, Look, you want to live on a natural basis? You don't want me to be with you? You're not so comfortable with me, so close to you? You want to send out Miraglim? You have to send out Miraglim then. But you should not have wanted it. In other words, you're doing it, Ladaitcha, but you need to do it. I'm telling you, you need to do it, but you only need to do it because that's the reality that you're choosing. Alkein eskimu l'shalech meraglim v'tiyak nisab d'achateva. So this is very interesting. In other words, the, the Nitziv learns, God told them to send out meraglim, but He's telling them to send out meraglim because you're choosing that type of existence. Another point says the Nitziv, and that is, um, Chazal say at the end of Baha'u'llah Yitzcha, Eldad and Medad prophesied that Moshe will die and Yeshua will bring us into Eretz Yisrael. And that was sort of the predecessor to Shlach, the, to the Meraglim. Now when they prophesied that Moshe would die, that's not definitive. Moshe thought that was what God perhaps decreed, but through his prayer he could change the Gzeirah. But once they prophesied that Yeshua would bring the Jewish people into Eretz Yisrael, that's a nevua letoiva on Yeshua. That can never change. We know that there's a principle. A prophecy for good can never change. God will never relent on that. So Moshe knew that there's no way in the world he would lead the Jewish people into Israel. Yeshua would have to, but he thought maybe he would join. Moshe never prayed, I want to bring the Jewish people into Israel. He just prayed, I want to enter Israel. I want to see it. Not as the machnes, not as the one who brings the Jewish people in. So now we understand that after Eldad and Medad said Joshua is going to bring them into, the, into Israel, and Moshe would just accompany them, we understand why the Jewish people asked for the Miraglim. So long as Moshe was the Manik Hadar and he was uh, allowing the Jewish people to be eligible to Midas Hatiferes. So they didn't need Miraglim. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu's power and Kayach was untouchable. And Moshe would have just brought them in. And that's why, very interestingly, the Nitzv says, in the war against Amalek, where the, the hour needed a war, Bader Chateva, Moshe didn't fight the war against Amalek. Why didn't Moshe fight the war against Amalek? Because God wanted that war to be natural. So Moshe Rabbeinu went up to the mountain and Yoshua went to fight the war. So Yoshua is a man of nature, of Teva. Moshe is a man of miracle. And therefore when the Jews heard at the end of Baha'u'llah that Joshua would bring them into the land, they said, okay, our, our reality of Tiferes is no longer. We're going to be operating with what is called Malchus. Joshua is bringing us in and therefore, God, we need Miraglim. And then finally, the Nitzv says, "Vine beparshas devarim." In devarim, ksiv should be oisam b'chayv that when they say on chayv, "Amar kolish baruchu bayu urishuas haaretz." In devarim, God told them, "Go inherit the land." But when they were in kadosh barnea, Moshe said, "Ale reish." But God knew they were not prepared for that. To add, to, to be in accordance with Gilo Shechina without Miraglim. And therefore, when the Jewish people presented the idea to Moshe, and Moshe understood that in fact the Jewish people are now on a lower level of Teva, Moshe understood, Lefi Madre Gosim, this is what they needed. Because on the level of Teferes, they would have blown it and Midas Hadin would have struck them. So Hashem said, Yeah, Shlach Lecha, that's what you need. I, w- I don't like the fact that you put yourself on this existence. I would have preferred that you remain on the level of Tiferes. But now that you're on the level of Malchus, then you do need to send Miraglim. So now I command you. So the Tziv learns, Shlach Lecha is a command. 
and Moshe was good in Moshe's eyes, so that Kaiso should not be destroyed, but Hashem still was not inherently happy that the Jewish people had descended to that level. And this is all based on the following principle called Panim Befanim, face to face. And then it's Siv in Sefer Devarim in Vaschanan, and I think this is just a magnificent treatment of Sefer Bamidbar. I mean, I, I, I've saw, I saw this many years ago, but it, it slipped out of my, the forefront of my mind. I believe, you know, I feel I have a much more profound understanding of Bar Midbar. Bar Midbar is a Sefer of transition of Kal Yisrael. Bereshis is the creation of the world. Shemais is the exile and redemption. Vayikra is a book of mitzvahs. Bar Midbar is the transition of Kal Yisrael from miraculous to the natural. And this is called Panim Befanim. It says in Etziv, the Yimashmois, the implication of Panim Befanim, is in that face that you show to God, in that vein He will act with you. And this incorporates two ideas. Number one, in Taira, in Dar Halimad. The more that a person prepares himself in his learning, to that extent the person will gain Siyata Deshmaya, heavenly assistance. Because we know, says the Natsiv, that at Sinai, not everyone understood at that holy gathering to the same level. The Medrash Rabbah says, Koyal Hashem B'Koyach. Not Koyal Hashem B'Koychay, but Koyal Hashem B'Koyach. Meaning, based on the preparation of every individual to that extent, they were Zoycha to Torah. This is Panim El Panim. You show God X amount of Amelis, God will show you X amount of Torah. You show the Yibbana Shalom Added Amelus Vanisham will show you extra Havana. And this was a uh, reflection and, a, and an instruction to future generations on their understanding of Torah that the Kavana Panim Bapanim, the more you prepare and, and elevate yourself to that extent, you'll understand Torah. But this also is a reflection of Hashem's Hashkacha. That it's Lafi Maisei Adam. That Hashem said, you're going to be Mamlechas Kayanim V'goy Kadosh. These are two levels of Hashkacha. Either Atem Tiuli, you will be mine, that the way you act, B'tar Avan Gmaz Chasadim, that will be my level of Hashkacha to you. Or, you'll just get a uh, you will just get hashkach on a lower level. Which is halichos ha'adam and Hashem ha'avodim gos chasadim gamkein. So Marv Rabbi say, this is the principle of panim b'panim. Panim b'panim teaches us that the way we accord ourselves with God and the reality, our reality and observance of Torah and mitzvahs, if we are not to the level that we are connected to Torah Mitzvah, to the level that we are wholehearted in our faith in Hashem, to the level that our Muna is deep, to the level that our dedication to Torah is full, to that level God will deal with us supernaturally. But as we slacken off and we live more of a natural existence, which, which is the level that we are on today, to that level we are not zoicha to see Hashem open and manifest. But still, it is in accordance with our particular level. And this transition occurred in Sefer Bamidbar, and this is most recognizable in the contrast in the countings of the beginning of Bamidbar to the end, where in the beginning the Nasi had to come from the tribe, in the end not so. In the beginning Ephraim led his group, in the end it was Menashe. And because the contrast is recognized in the two countings, the whole Sefer is called Bamidbar. And that is the deeper meaning of why Sefer Bamidbar is referred to as Vayavdel Elohim Ben Ha'aru Ben Achoshech, between the light of open Hashgacha and the darkness of closed Hashgacha. Furthermore, that is the meaning of why, of how Vayihi Ben Soya is a parsha b'fnei because it is at that juncture of the Aver of the Mesoinanim that this transition occurred. So this is the Nitziv's treatment to his introduction to Bamidbar, and he elaborates on it in Parshas Chukas, and in, in the beginning of Bamidbar, in two places, in Parshas Shlach, and also in Parshas Vazchanan. We'll hold it over here, and now, and now um, we're going to do one more shir on Shavuos. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.